What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, thanks for watching. My name's Alyssa, though you probably already see that, so you know, it's, it's fine. If you're watching me for the first time, please hit the subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. I post videos whenever the fuck I feel like it. So this has been a long awaited video. Um, this video was requested multiple times on multiple occasions and I posted it on my story multiple times and everyone says the same thing that they want to see this video. And the reason I've been pushing it off so much is because it's not the easiest to explain some of my tattoos. Some of them have a lot of really deep meaning that is really close to me. And it's just not an easy topic to talk about sometimes. I mean, like, I have some of my closest friends who still don't even really know the full significance of some of my tattoos. I mean, my mom hates tattoos, so she has no idea what any of mine mean except for one or two. I want to put it out there that I'm not doing this for attention. Like I said, you guys have been asking for it. And like I also said, it's not the easiest thing to talk about. I just want to do this really to help you guys understand a little more about me, understand my tattoos, and know that you guys aren't alone, and you'll kind of get what I'm saying with that as I get more into the video. I do have tattoos that don't have meaning to them, so I'll just go ahead and, and like briefly go over them, but I'm not really going to go into detail with them. Let's get into it. So the first tattoo I want to go and explain is the very first one I got. It's the one that's on my leg and it's a puzzle piece, but it also has a cancer ribbon. So I got that tattoo when I was, I want to say 19. It was right after my 19th birthday, I believe, like three days after. And I planned on getting a tattoo for my 18th birthday. And the drawing was done up, honestly, like two, three years in advance. Haley helped me out drawing it in <laughs> science class in high school. I remember it like it was yesterday. And it was my first tattoo, so I knew that my mom wasn't going to be a fan. For starters, she's not a fan of any of my tattoos. Never will be, doesn't matter. But I knew she wasn't going to be a fan of it. So I knew living under her roof after I got one, she was going to freak out and tell me to never get another until I live elsewhere. So I decided I wanted to incorporate two big parts of my life into one tattoo. So the puzzle piece is for autism, autism awareness. My brother, for those who don't know, I do have a brother and he is autistic. Um, we found out or we knew something was off, I want to say it was like 18 months in, and then we realized that he was autistic and had learning disabilities, so on and so forth, and also has epilepsy. So that was a huge part of my life and still is to this day. He's 18 now, but his mindset is of a seven-year-old. There's a lot of things he can't do. He'll never be able to live on his own, can't drive, can't cook his own food, forgets to wash his hands after the bathroom sometimes. So. It's been very hard on my family and even my friends who are around, like they understand how hard it is. So that was the reason behind that tattoo. However, the cancer ribbon that's inside it or underneath it as it's like dripping off, that's for my grandfather who was diagnosed with cancer and they said he had three months to live and he only lived about three or four weeks if I remember correctly. He um, passed away back in 2012 in my house. Um, and it was just very hard on my family. My mom had already lost her mother when I was a baby, so losing her father next was just very hard on my mom. So those are those tattoos. The next tattoo I think is the next one I got, but it's the next one I'm gonna explain, and it's the one on my ribs right here. It says, it's just a spark, but it's enough to keep me going. For starters, that is a quote from a Paramore song. It's called Last Hope. Paramore has gotten me through a lot of really hard times. I have multiple tattoos by Paramore, or having to do with Paramore. And they were always a big part of my life. Haley, again, going back to Haley, got me into Paramore back in 2008, and I've loved them ever since. I've grown out of them a little, but they are still one of my favorite bands to this day. And a lot of you probably actually already know that because a lot of people will tag me in Paramore posts and videos and whatnot. Basically, that the meaning is, is it's just explaining to kind of just keep pushing and if there's a little piece that's, if there's one thing that triggers you to think to keep going, then take that and run with it. If something's meant to be, it's meant to be. And that goes for relationships, work, friends, really just everything. So it's basically just saying, if there's something to go for, keep it going kind of thing, if that makes sense. 
I feel like if you hear the quote, you kind of understand that's what it means. So hopefully that makes sense. The next tattoo I'm going to explain is the one that's on the back of my ankle and it says Nina Strong. So a lot of people have actually heard the story because it did break the news. It was all over the US. So Nina was an amazing girl who I went to high school with. She was a grade under me, but I mean, she was so, so smart and so beautiful and so talented. And she passed away very young. She didn't even finish high school and she passed away from brain cancer. Um, and it, it was just, it was very hard on everyone around us. Um, we were very close on and off throughout years. When we were younger, we were very close. Then we grew apart a little bit. In high school, we did cheerleading together, became very close again. So we had a lot of really great memories and it was just very hard on the whole town and all the surrounding towns. I mean, I remember going to her wake and being in the line waiting just to see the casket for two, three hours, like no exaggeration. It, it really struck the town and everyone around us and a lot of people actually ended up getting tattoos for her. So Nina Strong was her saying and then the cancer ribbon being pink because her colors that were promoted for her were pink and gray. That one's hard to talk about sometimes. The next tattoo I'm going to explain is the one above my knee and it just says I'm writing the future. This is also something from Paramore. It was their slogan for one of their albums and it was just a big part of Paramore's um, as they've matured. And it basically is exactly what that means. Every day you're pushing more and more toward your future. You're constantly writing your future. So that's basically what that means. Nothing too crazy about it. So the next tattoo I'm going to explain is the one on the side of my ribs. And it is black and white. So I don't even know if you could really see the white on the screen. But it says keep me wild and white and then keep me sane and black. Michelle has the same thing but the opposite. So her keep me wild is in black and her keep me sane is in white. So we did get those together as best friend tattoos because we did get very close very fast and we realized I was the crazy outgoing person and she was the more like calm and collected person. So we brought out the opposite in each other. You know, she kind of toned me down a little bit because I did go through some times where I was just, just super wild not even just like partying necessarily, but just like super loud and obnoxious and outgoing and being Italian, you can see I'm talking with my hands. So she had to help me, she kind of helped me tone that down while I kind of brought the more outgoing side to her. So now she's a lot more like me, I guess. I don't, I don't know. It was just like a really cute best friend tattoo that we got together. And that very same day, I also got the tattoo on my wrist side here, which says unbreakable. So. At this time, I want to say it was it was between January and March of this year, and around August of last year, I was very, very depressed, and it was sticking for months. It wasn't going away. It only kind of got worse. I was going out and doing things and being active, but in the back of my head, I was very depressed with life and a lot of personal things going on. So I was very, very depressed. I ended up leaving a job because I was just so depressed that I just didn't have the motivation to do the job even though it was something I loved. Started working for my mom from home. Kind of stopped modeling for a little bit. Nothing too crazy, only for like maybe a month or so. And I was just posting like old content. And I was just, I was just going through a lot. So one night, it was, I want to say it was a Saturday night. I was up at like 10.30 just laying in bed, just sulking, being upset. And I decided I wanted to get a tattoo, trying to push myself through the depression and like move past it and get over it. So I messaged Steve over at Sacred Art and Seymour, which is who I go to for a lot of my smaller tattoos. I messaged him and I was like, hey, you know, I'm going through a lot of hard times right now. Is there any way I could come in tomorrow for a tattoo? He's off Sundays. He said, come right in, come in at 10, 11, 12. I forget what time it was, come in tomorrow. So I went in and he helped me come up with the design. And that is where that tattoo came from. Unbreakable just saying you could go through the hardships, but you need to just again keep pushing forward and nothing can break you The next 
tattoos, I should say, group of tattoos I'm going to explain, is my sleeve. Because obviously that's the most popular piece that everyone sees all the time with my modeling. And I actually do get a lot of compliments on it, which is great. So the first one I got in my sleeve was this shoulder piece right here. I originally wanted it up here. And the artist was like, no, let's put it here. So I said, screw it, put it there. Then um, when I went to Ocean City for H2O two years ago, Actually, it'll be three years up and coming. It was 2016, 15? I don't even remember anymore. 2016. It was 2016. We all drunkenly said, let's go get tattoos tomorrow. So that's where I got this top shoulder piece that you see here, as well as the tattoo on my backside. Again, no meaning, just wanted them. Liked how they came out, continued my sleeve. The wolf, again, no meaning technically but the meaning behind a wolf is very powerful it wasn't necessarily the meaning that i got it for but it definitely makes a lot of sense i'm gonna go ahead and just read that to you guys when portrayed as good or evil wolves are always powerful and the same can be said about a wolf tattoo native americans viewed the wolf as a totem animal or spirit sent to help guide us through life symbolizing loyalty and perseverance the next tattoo on my sleeve is the two peonies this originally i wanted to be two sunflowers i went to nick at Skinscapes in Mayapak, New York, which is one of my other go-to artists. He walked in and said I wanted two sunflowers. He felt it wouldn't look good by the way that my sleeve was, and he said, let's do two peonies. I said, okay, I'm very go with the flow. I eventually will get two sunflowers because sunflowers are my favorite flower, but guess it's not happening just yet. So we went and did the two peonies. Then I went and got the butterfly. I'm really not going in the exact order that I got things in. I'm sorry, I'm trying. I literally forget what order I went in things. But so I got the butterfly and I recently did get it touched up a little bit and added color. But so the butterfly is obviously broken up as you could tell, which is from a Paramore cover. Paramore again, Paramore. If you wanna check this video out, that'd be cool. Tag them in the comments, you know what I'm saying? Haley Williams, where you at? Anyhow. So the cover is Brand New Eyes. It was one of my favorite albums and I just thought the butterfly was just such a cool idea and it fit perfectly right in the ditch of my arm, which yes, it hurt for anyone asking. Definitely hurt. Wasn't as bad as I expected. Honestly, it really wasn't as bad as I expected, but it freaking hurt a lot. Then going back to Nick in Mayapak is when I got the whole bottom half of my sleeve. The reason behind it, again, there isn't one. I saw a similar design. I always wanted a skull, but I didn't want the cliche sugar skull that everyone normally gets. Not to say they're not cool, they are really cool. And if they're done right, they're even cooler. It just wasn't something I wanted. I showed him the concept I wanted and he changed it up and made his own and I was obsessed with it. So I went full force. It was only supposed to be the very front of my arm. It wasn't supposed to go this low, but when he drew it, he accidentally drew it too big and it wrapped around the back. And I said, screw it, why not? I had the money at the time. We had the time and I eventually wanted to do a full sleeve anyways, so why not migrate it to the back too? So that's what we did with that. The next tattoo I'm going to explain is also in my sleeve. This tattoo I got on Friday the 13th. Again, no real meaning except Halloween is my favorite holiday and I love the Halloween movies. I love Jason, Freddy, all them. The other one I got, I actually got covered up. Um, it was on my back, just under my neck under like the nape of my neck I should say and it was an oracle when I was younger I used to play with the Ouija board a lot I know I know everyone's so against it you're crazy you're gonna be haunted this that and the other thing I'm fucking fine I had some scary freaking occurrences happen and if you guys do want to hear about those I could totally make a whole video talking about my Ouija board experiences just comment below but I'm fine it's fine I had a goddamn planchette on my back and I wasn't haunted, it's fine. So I actually got that covered up recently. If my mom sees this video, I'm fucking screwed. My mom doesn't know. So like I said, my mom doesn't like tattoos, so I went and got that yesterday. Okay, I'm pretty sure I hit all the tattoos. I can breathe again. This coffee is fucking cold, it's fine. It's totally fine. Did I hit all my tattoos? No, I didn't. I forgot one. The last and final tattoo I'm going to explain is the one that's on my arm as well. 
and it says tell me you love me with a heart this tattoo i got with Haley. we both have the same ones in the same locations and we got them the night before we went and saw demi lovato demi lovato does have a song it is called tell me you love me which is also the name of her album and it was the name of her tour so honestly that in itself was the meaning behind it the main meaning but i also kind of had a more personal meaning deep down that i don't even think i really told Haley it to be honest i think it's hard to really explain this without being too personal on the internet everyone's goal really is to fall in love with someone and be in love and be happy love happily ever after with a significant other but it's so hard for some people to give love some hard to even receive love and love in general is just such a hard thing there's so many people who throw the word love around like they don't even mean anything basically it just in the song she says tell me you love me i need someone on days like this i do basically stating that you just want someone to be there for you when you're going through hard times it doesn't necessarily have to be a boyfriend or girlfriend it could be a best friend literally a best friend saying i love you i'm here for you but it comes down to we all kind of need someone like people could say they're better off alone and they want to be alone but at the end of the day we all want someone to be there for us i mean honestly like no one wants to be alone no matter what so it's more or less just one of those things that just means that i want someone to be there for me and that's not to say that people aren't there for me because people are 100 percent. i mean i have so many people that are there for me and love and care for me but there's times where I get very depressed and I feel like no one's there for me. And it's not because they're not there for me, but it's more or less that I just don't want to open up and talk to them. And it's it's not the easiest thing to open up and talk to anyone. It really isn't. And sometimes you can't even put your feelings into words. Also forgot to add too, me and Haley drew the hearts for one another on this tattoo. So on my body, she drew my heart. It's over here. And on her body, I drew her heart because you know, did it together. We're trying to be cute, you know what I'm saying? So that's basically it. I know this was a long awaited video and I'm sorry. It's just, I have a lot of tattoos and it's a long freaking video to record and edit and hard to talk about. So thank you for watching. I don't know how to end my video once again. I don't know how people just like chill and talk to a camera all day. Like, I don't know. It's really kind of awkward, I'm not gonna lie. Well, like I said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.